So today I'm here to paint the anti-fouling on, uh, on the bottom of the boat. Uh, what I did is I used a bit of the anti-fouling I had left from last year and I put a first coat on all the leading edges of the bow at, over on the uh, keel, the winglets, as well as the rudder. So that's left over from last year. And uh, what I'm going to be doing today is actually going to be redoing all the anti-fouling, but this year I'm changing to blue. So I always change color every year, that way I can actually see where the wear is, uh, so that I can put an extra coat. And of course we all know that the leading edges of our boats, all the leading edges, like the bow and the, and the, and the keel, take the most beating. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm also going to be getting a jack so that I can lower my pads and prepare the surface uh, behind the pads and uh, give it time to dry. So in order to work underneath the pads, uh, what I did is I, I got a boat jack, as you can see, and I used my car jack to give me a final lift just to take the weight off the front pads. And I was able to lower the pads by just unscrewing the, uh, the adjustment. And I was able to get enough room to go ahead and sand underneath the pads. And uh, so now I'll be able to sand, prep that surface. As you can see, you know, working underneath the pads is kind of hard. Um, so when you have a boat that has screwed on uh, a screw adjustments for your front pads, that really opens up the opportunity to, uh, to work underneath those pads. So I'm going to work on that and then I'll be able to do one coat of uh, anti-fouling in those areas and let it dry. Um, and then I'll be able to bring the pads back up and then work on the rest of the hull. There you go. So now that I've uh, sanded it, I, I used um, I used uh, about uh, 120 grit. Uh, sorry, I used uh, 80 grit sandpaper to begin with by hand. I don't want to I don't want to go through the gel coat or uh, or the interprotect. And I finished it off with uh, 120 sandpaper very lightly. And then what I did is I wiped it with uh, alcohol, actually to 50% alcohol mix. Um, here you go. This is what I used to clean the surface. I got that, by the way, at the dollar store. It's a 50% alcohol water base. So uh, I'm going to let that dry. So actually, it probably is dry anyways. So that removed all contaminations or whatever. I'll do a final uh, spread with uh, some acetone just to make sure there is no contamination or, you know, hand oil or whatever to promote the adhesion and all that. So I'm going to do that in a few minutes. Okay, I'm getting ready to uh, do the uh, anti-fouling now. So well, this is what I use. So I always get myself, by the way, every year a fresh uh, roll of masking tape, one inch. Uh, I say fresh because sometimes you keep it over a year or a couple of years, depending if it was on the boat or not, and it tends to glue or to the uh, to the hull more. So if you buy a fresh roll, usually you won't have that problem, by the way. And then I have a bottle. I call it like a ketchup bottle, which I get at the dollar stores. I, once I have my mixture of anti-fouling all mixed up, I'll put it actually in here. And this is what I actually use to pour onto my roller and go around the boat. So this it will allow me to save also some leftover for uh, little touch-ups later on or maybe in the fall or in the spring. So you'll see that in a minute as well. I keep always on hand some, some acetone as well. I have my funnel, which I'll be using to put the anti-fouling in the bottle. I have my anti-fouling. Now, I always use Interlux uh, VC-17. Uh, this year, I'm going blue, um, only because, as you can see, my boat is actually the copper, and I change color every year. So here, where I sand it with the pad, you could see this was last year's coat, or the bronze, and this was the year before. So I'm sort of seeing the wear, and where, uh, you know, I, I get to see it visually where I need to... Uh, where I'm missing some or I might be missing some, so it's a good visual. I keep alcohol, the 50% that I spoke about before, which I get at the dollar store too, some rags, and of course some gloves. You want to be working with gloves. And very important when you're mixing your, your um, anti-fouling, uh, to wear a mask. So during COVID, everybody's got masks because there is an envelope in here with the copper, and that's the copper that you will actually mix in that can uh, and mix it very, very well. Uh, so that's, that is volatile, that powder when you put it in. So it could be volatile. So you try and find a place where you don't, uh, don't have any wind if possible. I'm probably going to take my can and go in our, um, in our barn here at the Yacht Club where there is absolutely no wind. So I'll be able to mix it there. Again, wearing gloves and my mask as well. All right, so now I have the boat all taped up, but I wanted to show a little trick that I use. So I always start with the bow, and I make sure that the I make myself little pull handles on the, on the tape here by, by folding it over. And I'll always go, when I remove it, I just have to start with this one. And as I applied the masking tape, all the way in the back where it actually curves, I make sure that it goes 
obviously it's going to be one on top of the other here each little piece to make this curve so when i'm going to remove my tape all i have to do is start from the front and it'll come back and remove all of these ones here up until here and then when i'm ready to do the second side or the port side i'll do the same thing pull it out from the front and come all the way here and they'll all come off at the same time so now i finished the first one inch masking tape and on top of that i put a two inch masking tape in the same configuration where i put myself a little handle and I go all around. So this one's a little easier to uh, to put on, but it safeguards in case you happen to go a little over the one inch with your roller, you're, you got a bit of a safeguard there. So it's a little anal, I understand that, but I'd rather do that. And now I'm gonna go around the whole uh, the whole keel, sorry, the whole hull, and make sure with my fingers that it's, the masking tape is very well sealed and glued to the, uh, to, the, to, the to the water line. So that way, uh, when I can go in the paint, for sure, none of it's going to get or get seeped in between the tape and the um, between the, the hull and the uh, masking tape. And again, when I got to the end, the same thing with the end. The little pieces that I make to go around the curve are on top. So if I pull everything from the front, uh, it'll all come off at once. And now I'm going to go mix the anti-fouling. Okay, so I just got back from the uh, from the barn here, our working barn, the garage we have at the yacht club. So I didn't film what I did with how I mix my VC-17 because I have to wear gloves and a mask because that's the copper powder. So there's a blue cover that comes on top with the can that goes right on top. So once you open up the copper pouch and you got to do that somewhere, well you have to have gloves and a mask on because it's very volatile and it is a copper base and it, you know, it's not good for you to breathe in that, that powder dust and it's very light. So um, and then once and then you'll see that when you open the can there's about an inch below the level. So enough that when you pour the envelope of the copper the, the copper pouch it actually fills the can and then what I do is I, I close the lid and then what I do is I put the blue cover back on so all the little powder that you see here inside the lip and on well when I mix it and all that it doesn't go flying everywhere because the blue cover keeps it there so now I'm going to go ahead and take this here once it's mixed I'm going to use my funnel and put it in this bottle here so I can squeeze some out as I need it as I go around the boat and uh, put my anti uh, anti fouling okay just finished putting the uh, a coat of VC 17m so there you go. And what I'm going to do also later, you see my cradle here. I'm actually going to mark with a magic marker where it actually lands on the platform. So when we lift the boat in the fall, we'll know, well, there'll be no guesswork as to where the keel goes and it'll fit the pads where they go. So there you go. So now I'll be able to remove my tape, but first I'm going to go and I'll be able to raise my pads in the front again and then remove the jack uh, that I put in order to lift the boat and lower the, uh, lower the front pads so now i have enough left of vc17 and i put it in the uh, that ketchup bottle and i put a plastic over the cap so when we actually lift the boat i'll still have some left in order to do the um, underneath the rear pads and i'll have enough left over in the in the in the uh, next spring to do the fronting the leading edges of the keel and the, the hull and my foam roller i put it inside a ziploc baggie so uh, it'll stay fresh when i'm ready to do the uh, put the boat in the water and paint underneath the rear pads so i'm not wasting anything so uh, one of my fellow members just came to ask me how come it's not blue i told him i was going to make uh, this year is the year i, I paint the the anti fouling blue so this is indeed blue from dc 17. however the blue or it turns blue once she goes in the water so when you first put it on on the outside of the water it appears to be this bronze color but it will turn blue once it's in the water so a little thing could be uh so you're uh, it's a good thing to know because when you buy the can it actually says blue so when you start painting it and you see this bronze color well at least now you won't worry